Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the first of several weekly updates about how my Lent is going. So if you recall in my last video, I think I mentioned that during Lent, which runs from Ash Wednesday, aka the day after Mardi Gras, all the way through Easter, for Lent I was going to eat carnivore exclusively and fast on Fridays. So I don't consider myself to be like really religious, but during Lent, I like to use the opportunity to have a sort of mental challenge. And um, two years ago, during Lent, I ate exclusively keto pescatarian. So I thought that would be hard, but it really wasn't. <laughs> we mostly ate salmon, shrimp, lobster, tuna. It was delicious, it was not hard. I could live like that forever. So. Um, last year I decided to kind of up the ante, do something a little bit different, and I fasted on Fridays, just eating normal keto. Um, but I fasted on Fridays, and that was the first time I had ever really taken on long-ish fasts. I know for people who really fast, it's not considered very long, but, um, you know, I was in the neighborhood of 36 to 40 hours most weeks. And I really liked that because it was tough but doable, and I felt like it was a really good mental challenge. So this year I decided to do that again while eating carnivore throughout Lent. Well, um, we're 12 days in. The last couple days have been a little crazy and I'm gonna get into that in just a moment. Um, we're 12 days in and um, I guess I would give myself like a C plus. It's going okay, but not great. It had been going really well up until like two or three days ago, but I'm going to get back on the bandwagon and um, continue to keep you posted. And I thought about, you know, what my, message or whatever would be in this video and um, honestly I just want to keep a recap for myself and how this is going like for the future and if you find it helpful that's awesome but in terms of food and things like that but I also wanted to just put it out there that sometimes I don't do things perfectly and I try and I fail at things all the time and I maybe don't always document when that's happening because I'm like feeling down about it or I don't feel like I'm in a position to be helpful to other people. But um, today I was like, you know what? I had already said I was gonna document these weekly challenge or these weekly updates during Lent and I need to just do it and bite the bullet and, uh, and tell you guys. So um, I'll give you a quick recap of the days and then kind of go into what led up to everything. And I'm looking at my notes over here because I intended to do this weekly and like I said, it's been 12 days, so I am catching up. But um, on Ash Wednesday, I was in New Jersey for a work meeting. So this whole thing kicked off while I was traveling. Um, at work, it's not so hard to eat carnivore because there's like a Starbucks in the lobby so you can do egg bites. Um, the cafeteria is plentiful with a gazillion choices. And um, yeah, it wasn't so bad. I was there for a conference though, so they had like all of these different foods and things that were specifically for the conference and that was tempting but you know at the same time i'm like i work here i go to these kinds of meetings all the time i used to see this kind of food every single day when i actually worked in that office so i don't struggle so much with that fomo you know the fear of missing out on food that is like new and delicious and you think you might never see again um, used to be a big factor to contributing factor to me overeating in the past, but it has gotten easier for me to get over that because I realize, I mean, in this particular setting, it's food I've seen before and we'll see again. And honestly, I think if you're traveling to some exotic place, like when we were in India, I did mostly stay carnivore, but there were some meals that I literally knew I would never have again. Um, so I had them and I didn't feel any guilt about that. But for something like corporate catering, <laughs> I have to really like be honest with myself. Is this something I'm never going to have the opportunity to eat again? No, it's not. Um, <laughs> so probably not worth like breaking this mental challenge on day one. Anyway, so um, first day I was at work meeting. Um, in the evening there was like a socializing dinner and I had been at this meeting all day so I just, got out of there. Um, I had socialized enough and I went to Chipotle and you might not know that at Chipotle you don't have to do like a bowl or a burrito or whatever. You can get just the things. So I got um, carnitas and barbacoa and I think cheese and sour cream. No guac because that's not carnivore. And, uh, and I just ate those and it was delicious. Um, 
On Thursday, I met up with a couple of my friends from Instagram and YouTube in Manhattan, and we went to this beautiful tapas restaurant. And that I love tapas places because you can try so many different things and share with people. And um, that was a fantastic choice that Susie made um, for staying carnivore. On Friday, I fasted and I was traveling from New Jersey back to New Orleans. And I think a big part of success in fasting is staying busy, <laughs> having your mind on other things. And travel days are good and bad for that. I find that obviously you're like on a flight for a long time and you have what you have and that's kind of it in terms of food. But also for me in particular, travel days my whole life, you know, I've always traveled a lot with my family and you know, that's part of the way I was raised. Travel days were always like the most exciting day because either it was like the first day of a vacation or the last day of a vacation. And um, I've mentioned before that for me, my childhood, like my parents are total foodies. And when we travel, like we always sought out like excellent restaurants and things like that. And so like travel day meant the start of all of that. And I have this like deeply rooted associated joy with, <laughs> with traveling and with exciting and different foods. So anyway, Travel days mentally are a little tough for me because I think of them as like either the first day or the last day to eat very differently from the way I normally eat. So um, what I did on fasting day, and on the days that I fast, I do allow myself about 50 calories in the day. That's just how I do it. So I do add a teeny tiny splash of heavy cream, not my normal quarter cup, to my coffee just to break the acidity a little bit. Um, I, I do allow myself um, like a little bit of hot or hot water with a little bit of chicken bouillon. Um, and on this particular day, I had a uh, diet ginger ale, which is zero calories. It, I never, as I've mentioned before, I never really drink soda. So that was like a special treat for me and it was delicious. And I was still able to kind of satisfy that like special out of the ordinary travel day mentality without feeling like I was breaking my fast calorie wise. So Friday was great. Um, I didn't really feel hunger. I traveled in the morning and I didn't really feel hunger until maybe like 5.30 p.m., which is incredible, honestly. Like if you sit and think about how often we eat when we're not actually hungry, like if I was implementing this every day, you know, I, I don't know. Sometimes I, it really makes me wonder, like I didn't feel actual hunger until 5.30 in the afternoon. Like I think if I tried to live like a OMAD one meal a day lifestyle, Maybe I could do it, but I'm not interested in that. I feel like that might be a little difficult for my life schedule and socially and whatever, but I just think it's interesting to like really, really be aware of when we actually feel hunger. And that's a big benefit to doing these kind of challenges and longer fasts. Anyway, um, Saturday I broke my fast with some riceless sushi that at my second favorite uh, sushi place in New Orleans, and I was traveling back to Mexico on that day. Um, and I arrived back kind of late and like everything was closed in Mexico. So um, we ended up at a, like a Domino's or Pizza Hut or I don't know, some like fast food pizza chain because my husband really likes pizza. So I was like, we'll go to a pizza place. I'll get some wings. It'll be fine. They were out of wings for the night. It was late. Um, so I got a little personal pizza and just ate the toppings like the cheese and the meat off of it. Whatever. I haven't done that in a long time. It was fine. Um, Sunday, we went to a kite festival and uh, it was beautiful and it was really nice to spend the day there with my cousins and we brought one of the puppies and um, afterwards we went to this restaurant that does, it's, it's a seafood place and they do these cheese shell tacos. Oh my God, they're so good. So that's easy carnivore. It's just cheese and seafood. Um, oh, and I should mention in terms of carnivore, I define it as animal products. So. Um, meat is allowed, dairy is allowed, eggs, obviously, and fat like butter. I, what's different about carnivore and keto for me when I do it is I cut out nuts, nut butters, um, uh, artificial sweeteners, um, avocados, any kind of vegetables, things like that. On Monday, it was my first day back at CrossFit and I actually did CrossFit all week, Monday to Friday. I was so exhausted by the end of it, but it felt really, really good. Um, Tuesday night, uh, my cousin had some friends in from out of town, so we went to dinner, and um, it actually, it was a tapas place also, and there were so many things that were like not keto friendly and definitely not carnivore. <laughs> um, and you know, when like you're with a group and everybody who's like ordered a whole bunch of things and they're not really aware of what you're eating, 
that can be tough, but one of the many tapas available was um, uh, kidneys. Uh, organ meats are very, very common here in Mexico, so I got this plate of kidneys and it was divine, so that came in clutch. Um, on Wednesday, my cousin went out of town and left me with his dog, so we went for a really long walk, which was nice. But then, uh, long story, that puppy ended up getting sick. He has like a little rash in his eye, so my aunt has him separate from all the other dogs. Anyway, I only got to walk him that one day. And then um, Thursday, one of my other cousins, I have seven cousins here, you guys. One of my other cousins took us for dinner and he was so excited about taking us to this ramen place. And I'm like, oh my God, ramen, what am I gonna eat? And um, I looked at the menu in advance and uh, I mean, it was just many different ramen bowls. So I got a bowl of ramen with the noodles, but I got extra meat and extra um, hard boiled eggs. And I added shrimp in addition to like the pork it came with. And so when it was served, I ate all the meat, I ate the egg. And then I was like, I'm so full. I really was. And I didn't eat any of the noodles and it was totally fine. And the broth was delicious. So um, that worked out. Then Friday I was fasting again and it was tough, you guys. I was mentally just drained. It was a very, very mentally taxing work week. Plus I had been going to CrossFit all week, every single day. And I mean, I hadn't, obviously I've worked out pretty regularly kind of my whole life, but I hadn't been to CrossFit since October. So it was tough to get back in there. Honestly, that Monday I, like fought so hard with myself internally about going or not going, but um, I talked myself out of talking myself out of not going. No, wait, I talked myself out of talking myself out of going. <laughs> um, and I'm glad I went because every day it got easier. I forgot that CrossFit is like super fun and it's only an hour and there are many modifications. So like if there's something you can't do, they help you and it's fine, it's fine. I just like gotta, I had this like mental block. I was like, it's gonna be so hard. That's what I was worried about, that it was gonna be too hard, which is a silly thing to be worried about. But by the time Friday came around, I was sore, I was exhausted. Um, yeah, <laughs> and I woke up hungry. I felt actual hunger on and off all day. I did have same coffee with a tiny splash of heavy cream in the morning, lots of water. Um, I felt like true hunger about 4.30 p.m., so earlier than the previous week. And again, I did the hot water with a little bit of chicken bouillon, um, and I tried to stay busy. I actually walked home from the gym. It's about a mile and a half, two miles away. Um, I normally Uber there and back because I don't have a car here in Mexico and Uber is super cheap. But um, it was a beautiful day and the walk's not far. It took like 30, 35 minutes and I got my steps in. I'm actually participating in a step bet with uh, keto coach Lauren over the next, uh, it's five weeks long, we're two weeks in. So that was a nice way to like pass the time and get my steps in. And then my aunt came over and she was like, it's urgent that I talk to you. Your cousin's boyfriend just called me and they're gonna get engaged on Sunday. Now my cousin and his boyfriend were out of town um, for the boyfriend's cousin's wedding. So his whole family was there and my cousin was there and after the wedding, the wedding was Saturday, he was gonna propose on Sunday and he was gonna like throw this big party afterwards because his whole family was already there and he invited us to attend. Now this was in Campeche, I'm in Puebla. Um, so we bought flights, uh, plane tickets that day, <laughs> that was Friday. And I was like hangry and tired and I was just like, ah, so taxed. I mean, ex excited for my cousin, but just like drained, exhausted. Um, Saturday morning, so I like silenced my phone and went to bed because I just wanted to sleep. And I naturally woke up early on Saturday because that just happens now. And I looked at my phone and I had like a million missed calls and text messages. My other cousin, the one who has eight dogs, one of his dogs had been sick for many months. She had cancer and she had these little tumors that kept popping up. And um, they had been taking her to the vet regularly to have many surgeries kind of all the time to have these little tumors removed and she passed away that night and I felt like such a jerk for having silenced my phone I never do that I was just so tired and I felt like such a jerk for having silenced my phone because they were calling at like 11 p.m. it wasn't the like 3 in the morning I would have gone over there I would have sat with them you know I just I felt so bad so um, I went and had my lashes redone that morning and then on my way back I was walking home because I wanted to get my steps in and my aunt was like hey, we're gonna bury the dog. Do you wanna come and like hang out with your cousin? I was like, yeah, I really do. Um, 
So while they buried the dog, I sat with my cousin and we just kind of like talked all afternoon and, and just like pass the time and help him get his mind off things. He's had many, many dogs throughout the years and it's not the first one to pass away, but it's just like, it was a really tragic circumstance. It, he, yeah, they had a, like, they had a really traumatic night. So it was nice to just like sit with him and chat all day. And I had my coffee with me and my water. So I did break my fast with the coffee at like 9.30 in the morning, but I didn't really eat anything until like four in the afternoon because I sat with him all day until I was like, guys, I'm sorry, I'm enjoying this very much, but I have to go because I'm hungry. And they were like, oh, we have food here. We, um, they had ordered some taco accoutrements <laughs> for tacos al pastor. And they were like, here's the meat. They know I do like a meat only. F it's, it's easy for them to think of it that way. Like I just eat meat. So they were like, here's the meat, it's delicious. So I ate the meat and it was so good. <laughs> and um, that was my Saturday. Then Sunday morning, we woke up at two in the morning to like catch the bus to take a flight to make it to Campeche. We got there at like eight in the morning. It's a beautiful view of the ocean. And then we like were tourists around town, but like hiding from my cousin and his boyfriend because it was a, a surprise that we were there. So um, we were like texting the boyfriend, like, we're, we're gonna go through the lobby. Where are you? No, hide. And like, <laughs> this is a really fun adventure to like see the town and also be in top secret mode. Um, so we like did a tour around town and it was lovely and we walked along the beach and then in the afternoon he proposed like privately but then they came to the party where his whole family was and we were like there to, to celebrate them and my cousin was just like so surprised and so happy and just like waterworks. We were all just like crying and crying. And um, so this was like a set meal that they had chosen as well, but there was, uh, I had the steak. I mean, there were like some options. I had the steak that was just like 10 out of 10, so, so good. So that was yesterday. And then today we traveled back to Puebla and today everything just went out the window. Actually starting last night, they had dessert at the thing. I had like a bite of cake and it wasn't even good. And then my aunt was just like, let's go get ice cream. Let's eat all the candy. And I was like, okay. And um, I ate probably worse than I've eaten in a long time, but it was only a couple of days. Today, I feel like bloated and gross. And um, so we f today we flew from Campeche back to Mexico City, took the bus back to Puebla, and um, we're home now. <laughs> it's been a whirlwind from like fasting and being hangry to learning about the proposal to the puppy dying to flying and the engagement party. And now we're back and <laughs> it's just been a weird 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 couple of days but i'm so happy you guys to like live here and be here for my cousins and to like see them all the time and to be a part of their life events the way we always have been but now even more so and i'm just i'm happy to be here but it's it's been an exhausting couple of days and honestly like i said up until like two days ago my diet was going really well my 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 carnivore challenge and i did fast properly on both Fridays. So check, check. <laughs> Just the last couple of days have not been great, but you know, it happens and I'm back on it. And I obviously recognize that I feel so, so much better when <laughs> I don't eat sugary junk. Um, that's no surprise to anybody. So tomorrow's a new day. We got home kind of late and I feel like a little congested, probably just from the travel. And also I think there were down pillows at the hotel and I'm allergic to down. So I skipped the gym today, but um, I plan to continue going to CrossFit. I'm really, really enjoying it. And I plan to continue eating carnivore and fasting on Fridays. So thank you for sticking around for my extremely long update. Um, I will talk to you soon.